Hey guys, I'm Eddie Joe, and today is Monday, November 5th, 2018, and I have a mustache. Why do I have a mustache? Well, it's November, and I do the Movember thing. I've been doing it for the last seven years to the detriment of my wife, primarily, for most of these years. Um, but yeah, it's a cause I believe in because I believe in supporting uh, research towards men's health initiatives such as testicular cancer, prostate cancer, uh, men's health, etc. So that's why I look silly like this, okay? So don't give me too much of a hard time. This video is uh, pertaining to the recent award that I got at the facility where I work at, where I was given the award of being the evidence-based practice physician of the year. But before I get into that, my name is Eddie Joe. I am a critical care and medicine physician. Uh, thank you for clicking on my video. If you learn absolutely anything from me um, or I help motivate you or something like that, please leave me a thumbs up because that honestly helps my channel grow. Let's get started with the video now, okay? As I mentioned last week, I was recognized at my institution for Physician of the Year for Evidence-Based Medicine Practice. And before you get, you know, too carried away about, oh, you're Physician of the Year, etc., I wasn't the only Physician of the Year. See, there was this big Physician of the Year up top, and then a whole bunch of, well, not really a whole bunch, but three other little physicians who uh, won other awards, and mine was Evidence-Based Practice. Um, I posted something on Instagram, and I got a lot of love for it. I appreciate that, but... Point of the video is not for my recognition the point of this video is you know to basically show you what my thoughts are regarding this award and so on um it was an honor honestly first of all to be nominated and recognized and the person the people who nominated me were the nursing staff if i'm going to be completely transparent but to see the names of the positions who are not who are also nominated for the award um was very flattering and humbling because there are a lot of great physicians who work at my shop and i'm proud to be named amongst them um also, it was very flattering because I'm only one year out of fellowship. And it's 2018 right now. I completed my fellowship in June of 2017. So uh, it also means that there's a lot of pressure on me because I have to keep it up now. And why did I get nominated and win for evidence-based practice? Well, do you really have to ask? I mean, just look around my channel. Everything's about evidence-based medicine. But it all ultimately comes down to teaching. And that's one of my passions. Um, I think it's pretty obvious that I like to teach. I mean, hence, that's why I've made this YouTube channel. Uh, I do particularly, since I'm not in an academic institution, I do not have students, even though some students come and rotate with me uh, on a special request basis. I do not have residents, interns, nor fellows who are under me, and I did that intentionally. I think I'm going to make a video about that. But since I do not work in an academic institution, the vast majority of the people who I teach are the nurses, respiratory therapists, the rest of my staff, uh, even the environmental, environmental staff. If they're around and they're pretty interested in something I'm saying, and they're kind of like, listening a bit, I will go ahead and teach them as well. Um, but of course, I only teach about things that I know about, okay? You won't find me teaching about... Um, I can't think of something right now off the top of my head. And the truth is, it's because I want my colleagues, nurses, and the rest of my staff to know what it is that I do, why I do what I do, and to know that I'm not making stuff up. And I don't want them to trust me, just like I don't want you to trust me. I want you to know what study the information came from and how to access it. And if you can't access it, I'm going to get it to you because that's, I'm friendly like that from time to time. Um, I regularly email, you know, my nurse practitioners and my nurses, you know, articles and things that are relevant to the patients who were taken care of at that time. And like I said, I don't make things up. Um, I do have a style, which you could probably see in my video that's titled, um, a day in the life of, the, of an intensivist. And I do have a certain way of doing things. Everybody practices medicine in a different manner, but I honestly don't try to reinvent the wheel. Now, the researchers, yeah, those guys are the ones who are trying to reinvent the wheel. And, you know, we have to learn a lot from them because like I said, I don't make anything up. The fact that I could recite different studies and know the data from different studies, etc., is just because I put forth the best effort I possibly can. I'm not gonna say I'm perfect, but I put forth the most effort I can to take care of my patients because that's why I'm a doctor. That's why you are possibly becoming a doctor or possibly becoming a nurse or whatever specialty you're gonna get into or whatever sector of healthcare you're gonna get into, you wanna be the best. Why? To take care of people. If you're in this for a paycheck, you're in this for the wrong reason and you should get out. Now, I'm not doing anything special. Like if you if if you're saying, oh Eddie, you know, you read and you stay up to date and you're like, that's what we're supposed to do. Well, yeah, that's my point. This is I'm being recognized for something that I'm supposed to be doing, something that you're supposed to be doing as a as a healthcare professional. And and this is like I said, something I believe we do, we all should do because it comes with the territory. If you don't have the commitment to your patients, 
to stay up to date and read an article a day or something like that, you're in the wrong career and you should get out. And this doesn't make me a smarter person. I just use time possibly more efficiently than other people do. Now, reading and learning evidence-based medicine is the easy part. Yes, it is easy. I'm saying it. And I already made a video demonstrating on how I do it, which was titled How I Stay Up to Date in Critical Care Medicine, which I believe at the time of this recording has like 500 something views, which is not a lot in the grand scheme of things, but I've gotten some great feedback that it helps a couple people, and that's ultimately what is important to me, to help out people. The challenging part, at least in my opinion, are those who are in the trenches, in the labs, who are going to their IRB, trying to get permission, trying to get funding, trying to get grants to be able to uh, conduct these studies that I just sit on my couch, don't break a sweat, and I just read it, and I interpret the data, etc. But the people who are in the trenches are the people who are the real physicians of the year for evidence-based practice. Like I said, I just go by their guidelines. And I published one thing in one pretty reputable journal, but ultimately I hated the process, which is the reason why I respect the people who do it as much as I do. Uh, those individuals, the researchers, are far more um, important, I believe, than I am in that aspect. I mean, I'm at the bedside, I'm in the trenches in a different manner, but whatever, that's just my opinion. But they are, like I said, the ones who deserve credit for the award ultimately that I won. And, you know, one of the cool things about Twitter and why I tell people to get on Twitter is because you're able to interact with a lot of these individuals who publish these articles and the ones who have the groundbreaking ideas or the ones who deconstruct articles to, you know, even though an article won't meet their primary endpoint, however, the secondary endpoints are clinically appropriate. And if you, not a clinic, clinically appropriate, but um, they are practice changing parts of data and uh, if you just read the abstract you're going to miss that entirely and there are people who just break that apart and recently I tweeted a big thank you to some of those individuals and everybody responded back which was very very flattering at the end of the day um, you know that's one of the core reasons and why I say to go ahead and get on Twitter and follow some of these people you may say to yourself but Eddie it takes a lot of work and energy and I'm, and I'm tired that's what you might say well listen you're preaching to the choir medicine is exhausting nursing is exhausting being a respiratory therapist is exhausting and you have to be on your toes the whole entire day um, like I said preaching to the choir and I honestly have taken a two to three month break where I don't read any evidence-based medicine any type of data whatsoever because sometimes your brain is fried and I find out one of the benefits of having the seven on seven off schedule is that once I finish my seven day grind, then it kind of resets my brain to be able to read, do things that I enjoy. Because ultimately when I'm on service, when I get out of work, I, you know, my workout or something, and then I just go to sleep, take a shower, go to sleep. Um, medicine is a crazy ride. So, you know, you might not feel like you have the energy or the time to read or to stay up to date because you go ahead and you finish medical school. Four years of training. You applaud yourself, pat yourself on the back, but you have to immediately get on the horse again and start your internship and start your residency. And that, you know, that time of training is anywhere between three to seven years. Excuse me. And during that time period, you might not have a lot of time to study because you have to do your own research, not study necessarily, but you won't have that time to stay up to date and read because, you know, you're studying for your boards and you're studying, you're conducting your own research, et cetera, et cetera. So you might feel that you don't have the time or energy to do so. And then for those of you who choose to do a fellowship, well, then you've already gone through the grind so much that you already know how it is. But you will and you must find time on your own time to stay up to date. Your patients need it, okay? They're counting on you to stay up to date. Um, what I feel that you're not allowed to do, and unfortunately it's something we see way too often, is are those physicians who just go ahead, they complete a fellowship, they complete their residency, and they get they get a job, and they get a nice little paycheck. Hey, you know, you have to be compensated for your efforts and for your time and all your sacrifice. I mean, medicine is one hell of a delayed gratification specialty or career. But once these people start collecting their paycheck, they just sit on their couch and they basically stop staying up to date in medicine. And the reason why I bring it up is because this is disgusting, this is disgraceful, and it's way too common. Right now, if you're in, you know, if you're in training or something like that, you're watching this video, you're gonna say, oh, this isn't me. But the truth is, it's a lot of people, and I see it firsthand, and like I said, it's very disappointing to see people who have been out of practice for 10 or 20 years, and they're not up to date. They haven't read anything, you know, recent, or they can't quote you any new studies, or, you know, anything that's changed their practice outside of, like, what the newer kid in the practice has brought into the shop. You don't, you don't want to be that doctor, okay? Now, 
one of the things that's happened now since I was recognized for my evidence-based practice is that now I hope that this um, sparks kind of some motivation within the hospital system where people want to win the award and people want to do better than me. And I'm all for competition because that's how things improve. And I hope I motivate someone. Um, I hope that somebody who has been kind of like falling back on their, on their studying, on their reading, on their staying up to date, I hope that somebody just gets motivated and starts doing it all of a sudden. But ultimately what matters is patient care. And the reason why I read so much is not to be better than my peers, but because I want to take the best care of patients as human possible. Outcomes are better if you stay up to date. Hospital costs tend to be lower. Satisfaction improves. Your quality of life improves because you know your stuff and the quality of life for your patients improves. And that's the whole point, right? Don't we sacrifice so much to do all that? Well, just a little bit of dedication on your free time could allow you to do all these things, which is great. And that basically concludes my video. Once again, my name is Eddie Joe. I'm a critical care medicine physician. Thank you very much for watching my video. And like I said earlier, if you learn absolutely anything from these videos or from me, click on the like button. I greatly appreciate your support to this channel and I hope you have a great day. Bye.